Welcome back to CodeOps HQ. You've already seen how Waybar transforms your desktop, now it's time to harness the real power of Sway WM and tame every window. Sway WM is a tiling window manager for Wayland and drop in replacement for the famous i3 WM. It is 100% keyboard driven and fully configurable via plain text files. In part 1, we built a stunning Waybar, today, we configure Sway itself. Here's our roadmap. We'll set a wallpaper and modularize our config, tweak gaps and borders, configure monitors and inputs, define floating rules, and craft custom key bindings with auto start. Let's dive in. I want to share a resource that's been incredibly helpful to me, the Figma UI UX Design Essentials class by Daniel Scott on Skillshare. This class offers a comprehensive introduction to user interface and user experience design, covering topics like interface layout, color theory, and user flows. It's perfect for anyone looking to enhance their design skills, whether you're working on desktop configurations or web applications. Skillshare provides access to thousands of classes across various creative disciplines. So, if you're interested in expanding your skill set beyond UI UX design, there's a vast collection of classes to explore. As a special offer, the first 500 viewers who use the link in the description will receive a one-month free trial of Skillshare. It's a great opportunity to level up your design skills and more. Huge thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. First let us create config file in our Sway config directory. We set our background image with output BG. Next, we include everything in config.d so each aspect of our config lives in its own file. Finally, we re-include Sway's built-in defaults via layered include, ensuring updates don't break our customizations. In our Sway config directory, we create config.d folder and add theme.conf file. We pull in our colors file and define same window border background and text colors Then set 7px inner gaps and 4px outer gaps for breathing room. Borders are a consistent 3px on every window, no smart borders, so edges are always visible. We disable focus follows mouse to avoid accidental focus changes. Under exec underscore always, we enforce a way to dark for GTK apps, prefer a dark color scheme, and set our cursor theme. This ensures any GTK application launched under Sway matches our tiling aesthetic. And here is our colors file. Here in output.conf, we explicitly set display resolution. You can also define position, scale, or transform for rotated or high DPI setups. Use Sway message to get information about your output devices. In input.conf, we enable tap to click, disable while typing, natural scroll, and middle button emulation on the touchpad. 
We also turn on NumLock for our keyboard so the numpad works immediately. And you can get information about your input devices by using sway message command. Not every app benefits from tiling. In default app layouts, we float audio controls, scanning dialogues, picture-in-picture -picture mode, any window with dialogue role and some app we want them floating, each with custom sizing. In keymaps.conf we map. Mod plus enter to open kitty. Mod plus D for Rofi and mod plus shift plus Q to kill windows. Workspace keys one to zero let us switch instantly. Splitting and layout toggles keep tiling flexible. Finally, mod plus shift plus C reloads the config and mod plus shift plus E exits sway. Finally, we ensure essential services start with sway by creating autostart.conf. We launch a clipboard manager to save history and enable auto tiling so window splits based on the window's dimensions, enhancing your tiling experience. That wraps up our deep dive into Sway WM configuration. If you found this helpful, smash that like button, subscribe to CodeOps HQ, and comment below with your favorite Sway tweak. In part 3, we'll build custom Rofi scripts and dynamic layouts, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching.